Hi guys, I'm Tom Delaney. You're all very welcome to the Online Academy of Irish Music. And um, I'm going to be doing a uh, low whistle uh, lesson today. And uh, we're going to be going through some of the techniques that are particular to this well-known instrument. With the first course, I'd like to introduce you to the little um, differences and uh, techniques that uh, are typical to the low whistle. Um, the first thing you'll probably encounter when you start the low whistle is that it's very different to the tin whistle or the flute um, just because of the stretch that you will need to reach the holes. Um, as you can see here when I hold the whistle I'm actually using the middle part of my hand of my fingers to cover the holes. I am not covering the holes with the tip of my fingers because the stretch is too big. So it's very important that you keep your hands nice and flat to be able to cover the holes. Um, here I'm playing a Colin Goldie um, low whistle in the key of D, which is probably the most common key and uh, probably the type of whistle that you will need to be able to play along with other people. Uh, but you'll also find other whistles in different keys that can sound just as nice. Today I'm going to teach you um, a well-known air um, called the May Morning Dew. It's the air of a song and we'll be looking at some vibratos, some uh, rolls, cuts, and uh, reaching up those really high notes that kind of make the, uh, the character of the low whistle. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, some of the little techniques and tips and tricks that um, we, uh, I went through there on this tune. Um, one big, big thing on the low whistle is usually the vibrato. So what I did here in this particular tune, I vibrated a lot of my A's, which is kind of the main note because it's in the key, the tune is in the key of A. So when I do an A, I usually vibrate it with two, the whole that is two notes down from the actual notes. So there's my A and this is the finger I would use. Now you have to check um, on your whistle and see what suits best. You might find that using a different finger might work just as well or maybe nicer. So it really depends on, um, on what whistle you're using. Um, there's a wide range of whistles available but they're all slightly different so that's entirely up to you. Um, 
So I did it like this. Another thing I use, especially on slow airs, is um, sliding the notes. So if I had to play an A, I would play that A, but by coming from the G that's before it. So you're kind of bending, um, it gives it that kind of bending the notes kind of a sound to it. And you can do it from under or from over. And that's only by covering the hole slightly and really slowly, you're able to actually bend it down or you bend it up by taking your finger off the G and to reach up the A. Um, another thing that we did, that I did in that tune, you'll, uh, you'll have noticed that this tune goes really high up on the high register. It goes up to the high C. And the high C, the way I did it is, I went to the high B and then again, you just do a half hole on the very top. So you have to lift off your finger very slowly and stop until you kind of reach that, um, figure out that the note is actually in tune. And it gives it that kind of a slide as well, a slide effect. So let's go through the tune together. The first phrase is. So that's the first line. Sometimes it might be useful to listen to um, a singer singing it or learn the words yourself or even be able to sing it yourself before you try to play it. Just try and memorize that melody. Next part. sliding the finger down from the high B to the A to kind of complete the phrase, finish up on those notes, and those no last notes need to be nice and strong. And then the next phrase, Again, I'm going to vibrate that D at the end using just my top finger because it's actually the only finger that doesn't have an effect uh, on the um, on the note D. So it's your only option really is to vibrate. Use this finger here to vibrate your D, and then you're going to go around the tune again. I inserted a little roll there at the, at the end. When you're playing a slow air, if you're very familiar, you become very familiar with the melody, don't hesitate to add little extra runs in between the note to reach from one note to another. So the actual melody of the song would be But those three A's allow you to um, change it around a small bit and maybe ins yeah, insert a roll or a triplet or something around those lines. Let's try and play it together. <laughs> 